one, two, a one, two, three, four. Hey, welcome back to Stuck in the Nail. This is episode 14. Thank you for still being here. Thank you for your support. Thank you for hitting buttons that help us help you. Right? Am I right, Echo? Dude, all the buttons. All I, buttons. Like I, I'm so old, I don't even know what buttons you can hit, but you're hitting the right ones, so thank you. Yeah. Subscribe, like, and share everything. <laughs> yeah, we. that's just not us, but thanks for being here. Um, today... Man, it's it's just a good time to be playing video games. Every time I play Star Citizen, I'm like, holy shit. It's coming along. I have to remind myself that it's coming along and it's still inching forward, but be patient. Be patient, young hobbit is what I say. Um, it is still the beginning of the year, right? We don't is. know what the year holds for us. Yep. Unfortunately. Yep. And uh, I guess we got some pa- a patch on the way, three, 3.17, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we were just discussing this before we started, so we'll keep rolling. I think we're going to have, as from a, from a ground perspective, from ground guys, we're going to have a rough, like it's we're, our priorities and our needs and our quality of life is not important to CIG. <laughs> so I think we, we're in a famine right now for ground shit. Would you agree? Uh, I think that's an understatement, but yes. And uh, yeah, I like. I, yeah, I wish I just. Like, it would be nice to know. I mean, I guess we know what their priorities are, right? And it's finishing mm-hmm. Squadron Forty Two, but it'd be cool to hear from the other dev teams about like what their particular priorities are and what what they're excited to see and or working on, right? Like, even if we don't have timestamps for that kind of stuff, I'm cool with that. I just. And, and and listen, VFX is cool. It looks, it makes the game look great and gives everybody awesome chances to like grassroots market for Star Citizen. Um, and they really do look good. But I, I just, I kind of want to hear from like meat and potato teams, you know, PU teams, stuff like that, like or weapons teams. Like we haven't heard from those guys in a very, very long time. Yeah, I guess. Um, oh wait, so one three point one seven. We are getting a, an FPS weapons refactor. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so but the, we don't know uh, anything about it. We don't. Um, we just know that the P four is going to be completely different. Is what right. that's what I heard. Um, one of the British guys, Super Mac brother, or uh, what's the other guy? Oh, board gamer. Uh, board gamer. Did it yeah. come out in the, like the Evil Cotty League or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So they said the P four gotcha. is going to be yeah. like absolutely different. Um, so yeah, I always mix those two up, like because they're both British. <laughs> and all the British people sound alike. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, cool. um, but yeah, so we were going to talk today about organization tools for like actual communities for like orgs and stuff. And it sounds like it's already been discussed at nauseum <laughs> in on other podcasts, like with Salty Mike or whoever. So uh, we're going to curb that one right for now because we, I mean, you and I are really good at theory crafting, but is that what we want to do? Well, yeah, and and so it, I think it'd be more interesting to hear what the listeners, wh- where they see deficiencies in org tools. Again, through the lens of FPS, like what they would like to see happen, and 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 sort of make their FPS game time more efficient. Mm-hmm. And maybe we could talk about that on a, another episode. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of people talking about. Uh, it's just the state of the the amount of information we're getting from CIG right now. It's not a lot. So a lot of people fall back to theory crafting. I think that's just being done so much on other podcasts that um, yeah. I think we talk about what we've been doing and right. go from there. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll let them beat that dead horse because it's all theory in general. We have our own wishes and we have our mm-hmm. own things we can discuss later. But we wanted to talk about something a lot more tangible to now like what can you do right now in the game how can you improve your fps experience how can you get guys organized in a team of four six eight whatever how can we deliver troops to the battlefield we've talked about this a lot and we've been finding that there in our own group we have some deficiencies because we're so focused on ground and we rely on the wonderful mighty eighth uh to fly us everywhere but we need a little bit more in-house control Right, so we've been discussing some drop shipping. So 
Um, not drop shipping like, you know, from Amazon, <laughs> but, uh, you know, troop transport, be. drop ship piloting, right? Because no matter how good your team is, right, Echo, you still got to get there, right? So from yeah, a ground, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I keep. No, talking. I was just going to say, I mean, if you think about all the ways that the game allows us to get to the ground, the most prevalent way is a ship, right? And I mean, honestly, that's the only way like a ship, even if you do it in a vehicle, we're talking about getting to the ground, not necessarily getting to the objective. There are plenty of ways to do that, but getting to the ground, it's a ship. Right. And I think Mm. the unfortunate part is not the unfortunate part. The the reality of the matter is, is that you have to have some organic uh, piloting skills within an org, regardless of what your org is to be able to get move things, people to the ground. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's super crucial. Like if you're, you know, if you're, if you can't get place people to the right place in the right time, then, you know, what are you doing? Right. It's that logistical thing. So, so we're going to dive into like our dropship theory, kind of our, our tactics that we're developing and our, our mentalities and everything. Cause it's different than jumping in uh, gladius and being an ACE pilot <clears throat> or going to, mm-hmm. you know, cause there's a, it's the same thing. It's the same concept as like, if you're the best FPS player in Star Marine, which honestly isn't saying much, so you know, so uh, you know, stop puffing. You have good individual on. skills. Yeah, you got great individual skills, but if you can't organize in the PU, then you're not that great, right? So same thing with like pilots. If you are the best fighter pilot in the galaxy, your father was the best star pilot pilot in the galaxy. Like, doesn't matter uh, if you jump over Obi Wan; he'll slice you up you know <laughs> so if you're the best pilot, pilot fighter pilot how do you do in big player versus player battles right and there's a lot of talented people out there in dogfights and and they have some amazing teamwork but um how do you escort a dropship how do you get them to the ground right that's a different topic but those skills don't quite translate into flying a transport they're like they're completely on the other end of the spectrum Think about the ace pilot mentality. We know very little of that, you and I, <laughs> but like I, I, nothing. Yeah. Other than what I watched from like, what's his name? Avenger one. Avenger one. Yeah. He talks a lot about yeah. it, but the transport. OAC's pilot, got good pilots too. Oh, yeah. OAC. The transport pilot is what's really missing. Right. Like it is that uh, that's I value like a, I would argue that a good combat pilot you won't know they exist because they're doing their job so well. Right. But a bad one, you'll feel the effects because obviously the enemy combat pilots will be all over your drop ships. Right. So mm-hmm. excusing that, cause we don't know anything about combat pilot. Yeah. How can you as a transport pilot, right? Like we're combat transport. I, I don't know what you like, what the buzzword is for yeah. it, but combat transport. Drop pilot. Ship pilot. What are things that you can do and focus on and think about, while you're going essentially through a bees hive to drop people off. Right. Yeah. And so echo and I, we, we think a lot alike. I've been bouncing ideas off him for weeks and, but I've kind of taken it upon myself to kind of focus on this dropship piloting procedure. So you're going to get my perspective. Cause I like to fly echo and I both love flying, but I think I fly a little bit more. Is that fair mm-hmm. statement? Right. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, so it's a good combo to have because Echo is so focused on our ground SOPs and our TTPs, and it's amazing to see what he's built. If you've come into our organization recently or you want to come check it out and you want to really see what a... I would consider us professional ground mercenaries, soldiers, whatever you want to call it, uh, troopers, privateers is what we prefer to call ourselves. <clears throat> and uh, we kick a lot of ass, and we will continue to do so. And if we get our asses kicked, then we'll adjust and we'll relearn. It's... It's so echoes. He's made that happen, and I was there, a part of it. Everyone's contributed, but this is my chance to add what I think I could focus on, which is this dropship piloting. So you're going to get the perspective from Echo today, who is uh, the guy who's good at jumping out of dropships, and then what I do when I fly, um, and then we also have J.K. Lighter and Chankov that are you know pilots as well in this regard. So you know, hopefully they'll comment, but. <laughs> Um, so anyway, dropship theory, if you're in, in the back of uh, a Cutlass Black Echo, you're on the way to the objective, um, you're probably not thinking about the attributes that the pilot has, but 
prior to that, what attributes should your dropship pilot have while flying you around? I, I think the biggest consideration is just understanding that there are people back there and how to handle that correctly, right? So, so some things that I've noticed that in the very limited amount of flying that I've done is that three Gs or more will throw your people around. Mm-hmm. So that's why we've we've created, you know, a brace p- call, right? Essentially just, hey, brace, um, which indicates to me as somebody flying around in a tin can, like being flown around in a tin can, is that I need to either go prone or somehow brace myself because the pilot is going to do some kind of a three plus G maneuver, right? Mm-hmm. Um or enables them like bracing enables the pilot to do more maneuvers above three G's. Right. Um, so just understanding that there are people back there and then it's like, this is like with anything is communicating, right? Like communicating to those individuals um, that sp- specifically those things that could harm um, th- those, those players right in the back of your ship. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, really the only one I can think of off the top of my head is the, you know the brace feature or uh, the the force Addies. reactions yeah force reactions yeah. And Addies, yeah yeah right and so force reactions is used the other one is is like accuracy uh so so accuracy on like if you're trying to drop me drop me and my team on to- on a target like on an objective somewhere being as accurate as you can based on what that ground team needs or the situation Mm -hmm. right needs so um for example if you're doing bunkers sometimes those bunkers have upwards of five turrets can you get in there drop them off on the front door and fly out without dying right because then you need to come back and pick them up you're their ride so it's like it's all those things it's it's not only and i don't envy a pilot right there's a hundred things that has to go through their heads but it's those things like I got to drop them off, pick them up. I got to be accurate. I got to make sure I'm not throwing them around in the back of the, of the ship. Um, you know, and a lot of those things you think like, well, that should be on the, the team. Right. But we don't know what the pilot's doing unless they tell us. So communication yeah. between the ground team and the pilots are vitally important um, to su- a successful combat drop. I, I get a I, I drop. Right. Um and so that's that's what I'm I'm worried about what the pilot wants yeah. to do so that I can protect my team and I'll enable them to do what they want to do. Right. So yeah, the, the point is you're you're not gonna put a novice guy on the on the stick and have have no, him I, responsible for the twelve people in the back or however many people you got. He's responsible for all of their you know, game time especially. Like nobody wants to spend time dying in a dropship without even getting some pixel clicking right yeah and our favorite our favorite term in, in our group is it's it's just a game and it is just a game but that game requires time yes. from individuals and while death <coughs> excuse me death doesn't matter really in this game i mean it kind of does but it's it's not super terrible yeah um your time does if you spend an hour prepping and then 20 minutes getting to the objective just to die yes well, now I've just wasted an hour and 20 minutes of my game time, right? And so, mm-hmm. yes, I think somebody who's piloting should have been on the ground first, understand what it looks like from the ground perspective, and then gets into a pilot seat. And if you do it in reverse, it it can work, but you just have to understand, like, it's time in the game spent that you're wasting for other people yeah. if you're not good, right? Well, uh. You're exactly right because um, for a long time I I liked piloting. I got into Star Citizen because of the ships and then the mm-hmm. ground combat opened up and then me with my background being a grunt, I was like, yeah, that's awesome. I want to be a grunt. But I still like to fly. So, you know, the mentality that I've had from a pilot's perspective has changed a lot because I thought I could be a dropship pilot and I thought I was doing things cool. But if I, I look at myself then, I'm like, you're an idiot. And the key factor that I had is you have to have a ground team first before you have a need for a dropship pilot. So here I was, I was flying my Cutlass Black or like whatever ship I could get my hands on. I just wanted to fly it, you know, and I like I liked the idea of having a pilot that can, you know, 
precision get like the team on the roof. And so, you know, that's, right. it's kind of a, a lot of people f- like that. I think that's pretty popular in star citizen. If you're flying certain ships, um, especially like C2s and they like delivering the support, right? Um, that's like a very desired gameplay. So <clears throat> I was doing that without a ground team. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it right. Then, uh, our first experience is being grunts in previous orgs when Echo and I are together. We, I got with those pilots and I realized I was doing about 130 things wrong because once you have troops aboard, it changes the game. You, if you can't deliver them in a timely fashion and then there's so much more like involved with that, just having the troops like Echo mentioned, like communication. Now we have force reactions. It's even harder. So, What's your terminology? Like, so are you are you watching your G's as a pilot? Are you just flying in, pff, breaking, and, which is fine to do, but you have to communicate to everybody that it's braced, right? You have to build a procedure um, so everybody's on the same page. So when you do come in and, and nail that perfect flare or, you know, come to a stop and, and, and land, everyone can jump out at, the, at a quick time. And so that's... If you'd miscommunicate that, everything you just did is negated because you're like, okay, let's take 30 seconds to get out of the ship. Oh, wait, we're here? What? Oh. You know, so having the having the troops, I think, enables the gameplay first. Like we were saying a couple podcasts ago, you can't, you don't build an Apache helicopter and then decide to build an army afterwards. Like, hey, we, you know what would really support our Apache is, it a, is a helicopter. No, it's it's the ground forces first. And I wrote this down here. Everything in your organization should support the ground effort. Everything. Right? And I think it's a, a general misunderstanding. I think we talked about this in the first episode. But it is a general misunderstanding that, um, especially in Star Citizen, <clears throat> that i guess situation dictates in that right but for the most part everything in that game supports troops on on the ground boots on the ground like they mm-hmm. it does you could even argue that a combat pilot fighting another combat pilot in an org v org setting is to enable your combat transport pilot to drop troops on the ground yep right and so you 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 are supporting the ground troops indirectly by doing your job really well. And so it's a general misunderstanding. I think for most, most time, if you have a ground engagement, everyone in that server on your team is supporting that ground. And, and, you know, yeah, it's so interesting. That's a big takeaway. It is a huge takeaway. So um, back to the pilot, right? So you're you're, um, from the grunt perspective. So you, you talked about what you wanted from a pilot. Um, I've condensed mm-hmm. it into a couple things. I went even further. Like we're talking about skills right now. We're talking about this, mm-hmm. but I'm talking about attributes of that person and like their mentality. Like even before yes. we get to the sticks, before we get to the techniques. So you you were focusing on like the G's and all those things. Basically, it sums up to that pi- pilot who's responsible for ten or twelve ground guys should be knowledgeable. Right, they should have a good understanding of the game, the ship they're flying. They should also know what it's like to be on the ground. I think that's a prerequisite we just kind of set in stone on the podcast. But any privateer transport pilot should probably have done some time on the ground and understand those processes, so they know yeah what it's like to jump. Because we jump out of moving ships, and we do it, and the survivability rate is high. Um. And it's successful. not just jumping, right? Like it's entering and exiting the ship. It's yes. what you're doing in the back of the ship while you're flying. It's what you're doing when you're landed and loading. Like there's a ton of procedures and processes oh, yeah. that the ground has to worry about when getting on and off a bird. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think it's important for that pilot to understand those processes. So they know why it's important to do what they're doing in the air and become Yes. proficient at that right yeah and then you mentioned accuracy accuracy when they're coming into land accuracy when they're dropping off that's that's all part of knowledge there's some skill there but yeah super important so if you're on the ground first and you understand why those things are important that's all part of your knowledge base as a pilot that you go off of so uh the next one I've i got, got a question for you oh yeah yeah oh sorry go ahead no no well i was gonna say what what do you then 
what is this all building toward? Like, what, what is the, in your mind, the pilot, the, the transport pilot, right? What is the, the drop pilot? What, what is like, what should they be shooting for as far as proficiency goes as a dropship pilot? Does that question make sense? Yeah. And I think one of the biggest mentalities and the biggest skills you can develop as a dropship pilot is survivability. If I was going to sum it up, it's 100% survivability because um, it's it should be the first and foremost priority of any any transport or dropship pilot. Like, you should survive. If you're carrying assets, even if it's just a bunch of cyclones that are going to a team on the ground, like, it doesn't matter. You're, play, you're carrying other players. You should be focused on surviving. If you're in a fighter pilot role where you have one or two people in your craft, different story. <clears throat> but if you're piloting a multi-crew vessel or ground troops, I think it's survivability. Does that, does that answer that question? Okay. Yeah, because a, a pilot practicing versus a pilot in a combat zone dropping troops off, you could be good at, without pressure, but if you're under pressure, how do you handle it? Oh, that, yeah. Right? So let me, let me keep going through the attributes. So we got knowledge. Yeah, yeah. The next one is patience because you're going to be a dropship pilot. You're going to be waiting a lot while the ground team does their thing. You're going to bug out. You're going to go to an OM point. You're going to be safe and you're going to wait, eat some Cheetos, right? Just chill. Uh, the next one is composure. That's what you were getting at. Staying okay. cool, calm, and collected during high pressure stress is much needed attribute for any transport pilot, any pilot in general, I think. Um, that's what you were getting at. I think there it's like, that's an attribute that we look at somebody before they would even like get behind the stick or for this is for like official player versus player ops, right? If we're doing casual stuff yeah, yeah. And, and someone wants to get that skill or that attribute and like boost it, like we can definitely arrange that. Um, so some, com Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Is, is composure. A can you, can you, is that something that through training and other processes like, give somebody that ability to get better at composure? Absolutely. I think you would agree. I think it's a great question to tee up those. Because uh, if you look back at your very first day at boot camp as a Marine, like your mm -hmm. composure versus now, like do you think you grew and, 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 and added some, some composure? I did, but, uh, you know, as much as we like to downplay like grunt level stuff, it's, it's not as easy as everyone makes it sound. But – in the terms of like not dealing with a technical like piece of equipment, like a huge technical piece of equipment, it it's different, right? Like composure mm -hmm. on the ground is necessary for different reasons than why it is in the air. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I agree. But yeah, I think it's definitely trainable. Um, and, and there's drills that you and I have done like on shooting ranges or in other areas. And you can do these drills in video games too, if you want. Um, mm -hmm. uh, stress inoculation is kind of the term there, uh, to see how you handle, com like how you, how composed you are. Right. So you, you go into a stressful situation over and over and over again, or you, you turn it up as much as possible in a training environment. So you come out the other side composed. Um, and that's what yeah. we can kind of do. We, we like throwing people, uh, you know, a hot potato. We're like, Hey, uh, knock, you're leading this one. Go your fire team leader. And like, dude, they're getting way better, better and better and better because we're just stepping away and just doing it. Like, we're not here to be these like, look at me, I'm a leader. We're just like, we're here for the bros. We're here to support. Right. And these are the yeah. attributes we want everybody to have. So um, I also put down for a, a pilot, if you were flying with a pilot who had knowledge, patience, composure, and adaptability, and then the last one is decisiveness. So I put it down to five attributes. Um, mm -hmm. But adaptability okay. and decisiveness, from a ground standpoint, looking at a pilot, what do you? how do you think that would help you as a grunt? Uh, uh, sorry, Ant, hit that question. Hit me with that question again. So your perspective, how does decisiveness and being adaptable help a pilot? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's huge, right? Like, Oh man, there's just like a thousand things running through my mind right now. But if you plan or brief a certain LZ, right, uh, and you right. get there, and that LZ is no longer viable, it's understanding why that LZ was picked and planned and briefed, and then find quickly 
adapting to the situation and going, I need to find that piece of property somewhere nearby, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because this one is 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 closed off and having that composure to be like, well, okay, I'm taking some shots. All right, let me take a snapshot of what that LZ look was, you know, the mental image of what that LZ was supposed to be and why it was supposed to be that way and that particular point and find another one nearby there so that the troops can get down and get engaged, right? Because you're not going to win the war as a dropship pilot. No. The way you win the war as a dropship pilot is getting as many troops to the ground in in a in a composed manner yeah. as possible. Survivability, right? Right. right. That dropship is useless if it's dead. Um so yeah, the, and then the size or if it doesn't have any people on it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a waste of gas. So um and then the adaptability. So the adaptability and the decisiveness, being able to change on the fly, but then the decisiveness to make a decision and stick with that decision. And then tell everybody in the back to shut the fuck up and sit down. Right. When yeah, I when I, I mean, think just, of yeah. decisive pilots, I think of Chankov. Dude, yeah. And uh, Chankov, that's why he's a specialist, right? And that's why him, mm-hmm. Leiter, and myself, like we, we try to like emulate these attributes so we can be better pilots for supporting the ground. But Chankov's like the best one we got right now. <clears throat> that dude's a jack of all Chankov trades. is the perfect example of like being able to do something. I don't know where I was going with that, but he, he's a good example for other people to emulate, right? And exactly. the fact that and everything he touches, he, yeah. yeah, right. He picks something, he sticks with it, and and has a reason for it, and can explain why he did that, right? Like, yeah. the purpose behind making that decision. <laughs> that we don't want Chankov to get a big head. So the one thing I would say, no, 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 he's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> No, Chankov's <laughs> fucking awesome. But Chankov, yeah. uh, his weakest one, I think, is is composure. He like gets he likes uh, to get yeah. excited. He likes to get excited. But that I mean, I get that way too, right? Yeah, we like, do. There are definitely times where I've been like, Ugh. yeah, it's not bad though. It's not like he's can't handle himself. He gets excited. Yes, and then it's excitement. It's excitement more than it is anything. But I, there's not a person I don't like. I trust more behind the stick of a dropship than Chankov right now. Right. Um, so that's what I'm trying to emulate. <clears throat> so Chenko, if you're watching, stay humble. <laughs> no, yeah, so those are the lack five. Of composure, though, he's still able to be decisive and, and adapt. Oh, yeah. It's, right? yeah, it's more of our huge. it's more of our perception of composure that we're forcing on Chenko. I think because he, in his yeah. mind, is composed. He just gets excited for yeah, good reason. Excited, yeah. I mean, that dude's, I would be too. He's got a cool service record. I, if we had like in-game service records, like dude, Chenko would have a stack. Like like a fucking just chesty puller, North Korean general. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, who's actually done something? Goes all the way down to the bottom of this, you know. Yeah, exactly. So decisiveness is huge, but those are the five. Just to summarize them: knowledge, patience, composure, adaptability, and decisiveness. So if you want to fly for Brander's Privateers, or you're a privateer and you want to consider it, start thinking about those things. This document is going to be released soon, so uh, we're kind of spoiling it on the episode. Um, and then mentality, like when you're flying troops, here's some questions I think a dropship pilot should ask himself. Tell me what you think from a ground perspective. Um, cool. How can I best protect the gameplay for all of these privateers that I'm transporting? That should be a question in my mind, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, that should be like an, an honestly a, a, an ongoing one, one that it's kind of like OODA loop. You're always asking that question, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. The next one is, am I equipped to communicate effectively with other air assets? So am I equipped, like, do I have the mental capability? Am I good at communicating? And then the second thing is actually a tangible equipped. Like, do I have my keybind set in a practical location? If I'm on sticks, I fly with HOTAS or a dual stick. So yeah, dual stick. So if I don't have my push to talks in the correct places, then I'm like, you have to let go of your sticks, which is like a no, no. Cause you come flying in and you need to make some calls. Right. So that's a very tangible and also a mental one. But what do you think of that one? Am I equipped uh, to talk to people? Yeah. So I'll bring it back down to the ground, right? Uh, yes. You should have two hands on your weapon at all times, but you have to communicate. Most of the times that's with the PTT or a switch or, 
whatever, right? Like that you have to, so you have to build that habit in yes, two hands on the sticks at all times, but again, weighing that, like, is there a moment where I can take one hand off, hit a PTT and get my hand back on the stick. Yeah. Right. And where does that, where does that work for me? And, and and that's why like layout of your sticks, like if you don't think pilots take their hands off sticks, I can't imagine that they have their hand on the stick all oh, the time. No. Of course, I, granted a lot of pilots have specific things, right. But there are times that, that they, you know, have to communicate or I don't know. Right. I, I really don't know how it works, but they have to build that communication, that muscle memory into, for mm-hmm. us, all I can speak about is for us. For a game, you're going to have an exter- external PTT. If you can find some place to put it on your stick, if you have enough buttons, mm-hmm. awesome. If you don't, you can't just say, I can't communicate because I don't have a button on my stick. That's <laughs> yeah. just laziness. You got to find a way in your process to make it happen. It, yeah, you have to find a way to be able to communicate effectively because mm-hmm. communication, as much as your pilot skill matters, so does the communication. Right. So what I do suggestion from if you're looking for to to enhance your piloting um i have on both of my sticks i have a pinky button and uh they're both a ptt to talk to whatever group i'm flying okay if i'm going to talk to like high command all right or whatever is above that if i'm going to say like i'll take my hand off the stick and i'll be like i'll press a another button on a keyboard or wherever i put it and i'll press that button and i'll be like uh yep this is uh, Daft Hobbit starting my approach run. And then I can, Roger, you're clear to go. And then I don't need to talk to them. So I can, I'm cleared. I can just dive in and go. So, yeah. So it's like having layers of it and knowing where to do it. That's what I do. I have an, like the most relevant one is while I'm on my stick. So when I'm flying and doing all these maneuvers, I can say, go green light. You know, I can still yeah. communicate. So, Which yeah. ones do you have? You have VKB, right? Yeah, I have the VKB Cosmos Seamas. And uh, oh, they're solid. And the gunfighter base, amazing. Um, so, yeah, if you have, <laughs> again, it, and, like, that's another thing, too, is uh, just whatever. Here, I wrote it down here. Um, it's just basically whatever hardware you use, just be super proficient with it, right? If you use, yeah. um, where did I write that? But anyway, if you use mouse and keyboard, if you're using a keyboard and stick, if you're using any combination, throttle, just be proficient with it and, like, be aware that you might need to change some stuff around if you're like, I'm used to flying this way. Well, if you if you can't do a certain maneuver or a certain thing that's required of this ship to kind of maximize its, uh, you know, abilities, maybe you have to change. So that's that adaptability. Being able to let go of keybinds, set up new keybinds is like a huge thing for people on the internet. <laughs> don't don't get echo started on that by the way, but <laughs> Yeah, I don't have to download one software. I have to set up a keybind. Oh my god, my brain explodes. I'll tell you this, all your problems can be solved with a $5 numpad on <laughs> Amazon. Like Yep. <laughs> yep, $5 numpad. <clears throat> yeah, so USB whatever... numpad. Yeah, whatever hardware you use, do it. Don't be afraid to adapt, though. So um, so another question here. Uh, so we got about the communication, right? That's a tangible thing. Mm-hmm. And also, like, you should probably have some communication skills. And then am I – and you, you can also be asking these from a ground perspective. This is the fail-safe. If we're about to kick off and we had some maybe like a last-minute sub in or something, I don't know. Because usually we catch this in our processes before. We just don't have the wrong person in the billet that's needed. You know? Right. If, yeah. But if if you're considering me, you, I, you, these questions you can say, how can he best protect my gameplay time? How can he is, he, is he equipped to communicate? And then is he skilled enough to fly the ship that we need for this op? And then I should be right. asking that. Am I skilled with this ship? Yes or no? Uh, and if not, I need to get there. Um, yeah. And then am I willing There's to There's a lot of ways to track that too, right? Mm-hmm. I know some orgs do. Oh, good point. What's the word I'm looking for? Certifications. Uh, to not be diminishing, but like, you know, yeah, certs, right? Certifications, um, which is not a bad thing. I, I mean, yeah. uh, you're displaying to somebody who's knowledgeable in that field that you can fly X ship, right? 
um, and you can fly it well. And I, I don't think that's bad, but there's there, there it, it, if you, if done wrong, it could be very limiting and a, like a big turnoff to some people. Um, so that's one yeah. way, you know, another way is just getting in, right? Like, Hey, we're going to go do bunkers tonight. That yeah. in and itself is a certification. That's fun. It's not, right. it's not a structured thing. It's not a, a, a check in the box thing. It's, it's a legitimate assessment of someone's skills behind the stick and you go and do three or four bunkers and that's their certification. Right. And, yeah. um, you know, it just validates, you know, Hey, Chenkov, can you, you know, Daff wants to be a pilot. Can you come jump with us or sit even better, sit in the co-pilot seat, yeah. watch them, watch right? his, coach him. Watch what he's um, doing. Watch when he's hitting his VTOL. Watch when he's doing all that stuff. Critique him that yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's the betterment of pilots is our, our organization encourages this, right? Cause the pitfalls we've talked about the pitfalls of a military simulation org, a mil sim org. Um, and sometimes it is these certifications, I've literally been stopped from playing. Like, there's no separation between a casual game time or and then like an official mm-hmm. PvP event in a lot of these right. milsim orgs. It's always pomp and circumstance, dog and pony show. Like, we got to pretend like we're in the military, which is neither here nor there. Like, if your org is like that, I'm sorry, I just don't agree with it. But you do you. But if yeah, you're I blocking mean- people, right from getting skillful then that's bad if i can't even do it until i have a certification and i have to wait for some official thing to come and like referee me to pass a class i think that's dumb like yeah it's casual night jump in and fly for us let's see what you got Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. and and everybody and you know we were talking about like death not really being a thing but time being a thing like everybody who knows like hey we're gonna do bunkers and we'll pick on somebody new Alexi, right, was one of our new guys. He's going to drop ship pilot tonight. Mm. He just wants to try it. So everyone in their mind already knows, like, okay, this yeah. may or may not go that great. <laughs> I'm I'm going to need an extra bit of time to be able to establish, you know, yeah. some gameplay. And, and it just, like, it's not necessarily revolving all around them. And, it, you know, you should try to keep as much pressure off them as, as possible because they're learning. They're, they're trying to learn something new. Yes. Um. But people know when they join that session, like, okay, this is a casual. We're just the boys hanging out, right? The, the, mm-hmm. the team's hanging out, and we're, we're teaching a new guy how to do some stuff. So Yeah, because there's a lot of reps you can do without people in the back. There's a lot of processes you can get down yeah. as a pilot. But until you have a team that's willing to jump out of your craft, it, like you don't know what you need to adjust because yeah. you might have your your distance to the ground off. So there's so many things. So that's a question I like to ask, like, just, do I, am I skilled enough for this? I like that's what you should be asking yourself as a pilot often. Um, and then we talk about survivability here. I think that's the main overarching goal for a transport pilot is like, you're no good to anybody if you're dead. And, you, and it's especially no good if, if you kill the whole ground team. Um, it, right. It's not as detrimental <laughs> if you kill the ground team, but know that in the bigger grand scheme of that particular event operation whatever that's time that you're giving your opponent to win right a lot of the events we do are time based mm-hmm. you know 30 minutes here 90 minutes there you have this amount of time to do this action right like you if you're killing your drop your teams that you're dropping conti- repetitively right and you don't die it's not as bad as if you're dying but also think about how yep. that affects the time window that you're in right like Mm -hmm. and as as privateers on the ground side like the processes you and i have built for the ground team is like is for them to be ready and equipped and effective like as immediately you spawn out of the hospital bed and you're ready to rock and roll you just throw some gear on and go because you've Mm pre-prepped everything because if you don't then that, that that respawn time that could turn into 45 minutes People like, oh, yeah. wait, I'm missing, uh, I'm missing a med pen. Oh, oh, I'm, uh, right. I don't have the correct helmet. Oh, like, you know, and, you can really. Get... And that's why it's important for the pilot to understand <laughs> a respawn procedure, right? Yes. For a ground team member. So they know what time to be where to pick up who, right? And, and the, you know, 
perceived time that should take for them to be ready to be picked up. Yeah. So some things to help with survivability. So you just avoid that at all costs. It's it's inevitable because it's going to happen. You know, transports are juicy targets, especially if you're flying a prowler. Right. I mean, it's a dead giveaway. So survivability, um, the priorities go like this. Uh, While you're in transit and flying and everybody's on board, your first priority is the safety of the craft because everybody's on board the craft. Right. So therefore, you're protecting everybody and the craft. Um, And you're also protecting the mission because the craft is the delivery system to get you there. So the second one is the safety of the ground personnel. That's second priority while you're in transit. Um, So that's like being able to call out braced or tell them that it's G safe so they can walk around like so no one's getting tossed or glitched. Um, And then the third one is any of your accompanying crew. If you have a jump master or some gunners, like if you're flying a a ship that allows some gunners right there, but but like a retaliator, a retaliator, even a cutty black, if you need a gunner to get something off your tail. Um, So yeah, that's the three priorities, but those three priorities, safety of the craft, ground personnel, and then accompanying crew in that order, they shift once the pilot has committed to an approach. Okay, because if you if if I'm on approach echo and I commit to do a dynamic drop is what we call it where we got troops jumping out para paras troop tr- uh, I can't even talk. Paratrooper ships style. moving, tr- troops are coming out. Yep, ships moving, it's low low and slow to the deck, but it's really, really fast from a first person perspective. It's really kind of jarring. It's awesome. So low and slow and I'm deploying troops. If I'm focused on the safety of the craft, I might call green light and then dodge something and kill half the squad, right? So the priorities have to switch. So if I start an approach and I commit to inserting troops, my number one priority is safety of the ground team. Second is yep. safety of the craft. I mean, you committed. Yeah, you committed. Decisive this, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, so it's committed. I'm. I'm. If I commit to get troops on the ground... My number one priority is getting them there safely. So I'm not going to stop higher than I need to be. I'm not going to go faster than I need to be because I'm fearful. I'm just going to focus and keep that composure, get my troops gone, and then I'm going to boogie. And if I die because of a fighter or somebody got me, mission accomplished. I at least got the troops to the ground. Right. Now, what what do you think? Ask yourself this question. We'll have Echo answer it, but if you're listening, answer the you know, ask yourself this question. What's faster to do? Have a full a twelve man team respawn and re kit or have one pilot respawn and re kit? I mean, I think that question's pretty <laughs> that's it's a that's an underhand yeah, it's, pitch there. But yeah, I mean it, it really is at the end of the day, ball. like you know, it, it's a multifaceted I, I love I love how you sort of lay that out priorities wise from point A to point B from B to C, right? Like Hmm. it is more effective to get your troops on the ground and then your ship die. The end goal is to try to keep that ship moving right. And up so that if something goes wrong in the next five minutes, you can get those troops out of there. But you're right. If I'm weighing the, the pros and cons, do I die or do I kill 12 people? Like it just makes more sense to kill yourself, right? Like, or or take, take that, and, and it's yeah. faster for you to be able to get back into the yes uh, you win the operations. you win the medal of honor posthumously but um posthumously yeah i think i said that right but anyway right that's that's the the priorities of your survival okay for mm-hmm. a transport pilot so um yeah so that's kind of how we do things as far as like mentality and then the attributes that a pilot should have Right. They should be able to prioritize, have the knowledge, all that stuff. Um, and then we kind of talk, uh, we can talk a little bit about the ships we use. I've listed quite a few here. Um, let's see. Let's see if you can list them off. What, from the smallest to the largest, not considering what the Mighty Eighth would fly for us, just what we would keep in house. What would, what would your list con- contain? Um, smallest. I'm, I'm blanking on some of the ships, but uh, Pisces. Mm hmm. Your favorite? Um, uh, I, 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 it's, it's my, it's one of my favorite ships because I just think it's a cool little ship, right? And I think in the hands of a skilled pilot, like everyone's so concerned about hull points and you know armor and shield, but like that thing, 
<laughs> you can get in and out of fucking tight places with that thing, right? Yeah. Anyways, Pisces. Um, what's the space truck? Uh, the Nomad. No, uh, nomad. You said space truck. It counts. <laughs> yeah, we were we were playing around with the Nomad the other day, and actually that was a, re- a lot of fun and just some really cool. I mean, you're already in a spacesuit, anyways, right? So why not jump off the back of the truck? Yeah. Uh, while it's moving. Um, let's uh, see. Going up from there would probably be the Cutlass. Correct. And any Cutlass, really. Um, yeah, the black. Or the I would steel. favor the black. It'd probably be black, red, steel, maybe for me. I don't know. Maybe st- steel and red could be interchangeable. Blue would be at the bottom, I suppose. Yeah, it depends um, on what the air needs if you needed that, you know, because they got like the uh, like quantum controller, whatever it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Um, so from in, in terms of size, not necessarily my favorite, uh, it'd probably be the Hoplite, which is mm-hmm. the least, my least favorite dropship, um, just because of how narrow it is. Um, from there, you have the Redeemer, you have the Retaliator, you have the Valkyrie. Yep. Right. And I think, uh, uh, let's see if I'm missing anything. A freelancer could could be a dropship. It could, right? Um, the one I put down is your least least favorite of all, the Prowler. Uh, um, yeah. See, and then the Prowler didn't even like hit like uh, that wasn't even, even your mind. on purpose. That I unconsciously did not include yep. that one. We've erased because, it because, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I have to reevaluate the Prowler every time I get into the game because it does have some like good mechanics. I just wish we're on different ships, right? To me, the big wings and the tail are very constrictive for the types of troop drop-offs that we do. That one has a very specific. (laughs) The developers had a very specific purpose for that ship. And then called it a drop ship. And so mm-hmm. it, it that it, its purpose is to land and let troops out in the middle of a battle. It has a lot of armor, has a lot of shields, has it's supposed to be stealth exit. too, whenever that comes on. Yeah, it's supposed to be stealth. It has quick exit ability, but not great. Like it doesn't have a quick, like, you know, pick troops up ability. Um what's the egress ability? Yeah, it's a longer um, ramp. It's yeah, we got some gripes with it. It's narrow, right? Like, there's a lot of things about the prowler that I and, and so just yeah, unconsciously I or subconsciously I just didn't even include it, right? Like I didn't. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's not a viable ship. But I, again, I'm not a pilot. I'm thinking about it from the ground perspective. You know, do I wish those doors had were on other ships like the black? Absolutely. I yeah. think that having that on the black would be fucking fantastic do i wish that the retaliators bomb bay doors were on a valkyrie fuck yeah i do that would be fucking great just a little slot that opens up and dudes drop out right like it just slides out and just dangling like yeah yeah. that pod bay is perfect for that you 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 open the floors that you can see it's got that same technology as the prowler you you look down you can see the ground you press Y to get out of your you get out of your seat and you immediately drop right like yeah that's what I mean that's what we're looking for in a drop ship rapid response direct action on the objective no. getting kicked out quick but like the prowler is the same as every other drop ship they say oh it's stealthy and it's not the stealth isn't in the game and it, yes it, we we might use a prowler later on in the future to to skirt and kind of probe the edges of an enemy's defense. And dude, if I'm yeah. if I'm gaming the game, I'm having one guy or two guys, two two pilots pilot a prowler, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's the target. You guys oh, yeah. fly in first. And then it's a fucking Pisces that comes in behind, drops actual drops, exactly. actually drops the true off. Or even better, it's two prowlers and a retaliator, right? Yeah. And everyone because goes for the prowlers. Everyone goes for the prowlers. And there's your defense, right? And those prowlers are eating up damage that otherwise would have been put on another drop ship. And people are like, it's so to me, it's just about that stealth to me, right? Is yeah. 
hiding not, the it's eggs not in yeah, your basket. Yeah, I'm hiding in plain sight. Nobody's going to target a retaliator when they see two prowlers. Nobody's doing that because they're expecting those troops to be on the prowlers. Yep. I mean, now they have technology to be able to see who's inside the ship so they can kind of cycle. But again, those prowlers are still capable support fighters, I suppose. I guess a yep. redeemer would probably be better in that case. But again, same thing. Two redeemers and a retaliator. Mm -hmm. What are you going to target first? Yeah, and it's uh, the variety of ships that we have. We kind of bag on ships a lot on this podcast because we're just sick of talking about them all. Like That's the focus. Now, we're talking about ships pertaining to how we use them on the ground. How can they effectively enhance our ground game but um the nice thing is that there's a lot of variety and so if you're married to one idea like i know so many people that play star citizen and they have this one track mind and they just accept it like oh you have to be in a dropship you have to be in a prowler like oh no the valkyrie is for this specific purpose and like they can't think outside the box and we've said repeatedly if the mission called for it we would drop troops out of a prospector mining ship. We would. If we could make it happen, it would be useful to us. We would train a procedure around it, we would practice it, and we would do it in, in a live player versus player thing if it called for it, if it made sense. We're not married to any one idea. Repeatedly, the Cutlass Black seems to be the way to go. And yet, a lot of people have gripes with it. And I think... This is where we're making some huge breakthroughs, right? It was with the Cutlass Black. Because the, the, the most powerful VTOL engines in the game right now, now that I know of, is the Cutlass Black. Um, I know it has, when I, when I punch it and boost it and everything going straight up from, from planet side on like a heavy G planet like Microtech or Hurston, it's 14 Gs of vertical thrust going straight up. And so... Yeah, we're not afraid to talk about our tactics here, but instead of lo going low and swooping in over an objective, you're not using that Cutlass Black to its full capability. And so that's the idea behind us listing these ships, is that they yeah. all do something different. There will be a place where we find a use for the Prowler, but it's few and far between because it's just an obvious show of the hands. I mean, so is yeah. any dropship. Really. You can make that argument with the Valkyrie as well, right? But yeah. uh, I feel like the Valkyrie is more capable than the Prowler is, even though it's slower, bigger. Like, I don't know. I, mm -hmm. I, I just think it's a more capable ship, it comparable it, in size than it is. But the, than, than the Prowler. But. The gap of their abilities is not wide enough. Like if the Prowler was so far away in capability, it did something so much more unique, it would be more viable. But it's basically the same it, thing, just rearranged. Uh, the Valkyrie, can you exit from the sides? Yes. Can you exit from the tail ramp? Yes. How do you get back into it? Oh, you can vault up the sides or you can run up the tail ramp. Oh, okay, so same as the Prowler. Yeah. Prowler, you yeah. can jump out the sides, or you can vault in the sides, and you can run up the ramp. Same thing with the Cutlass Black. Can you jump out the sides? Yes. Can you go down the ramp? Yes. Yeah. How do you get back in? You can vault up the sides. It's just a little bit trickier. Um, so if, if you know how to do it, it's super quick. Like, Hoots yeah. has it down. Um, but that has to be drilled, so there's a little bit of a... Uh, but can you get in through the ramp? Yeah, you have to run up the ramp. It's the same. It's the same shit. It's like the difference between a Samsung like or an Android and like iPhone or like a Mac OS. It's like it's it's just a brick that has two cameras front and back facing, GPS locator, uh internet access, like memory, like it's all the same, but they're like it's so different. Yeah. And people get on these well, kicks. Well, you about know, it. I would argue the opposite of that. I would say that the 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 reason why the prowler to me is is uh, undesirable as a, as a ship to drop troops off is I got to sneeze. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I got, I got allergies. You were muted, allergies. but I still timed it. I went like this, like Thank I was you. a conductor. Um, yeah. So the, the reason why is because the, the, the prowler has such a specific purpose, land, open doors, big, huge shields, like, you know, hard structures for the troops to, to land um, high behind you. right you know and 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 it's really good at that i can't argue that but 
of anyone listening to this podcast, when have you actually used the Prowler as it was intended on more than a few occasions, right? Can you count on more than two hands that you've applied the specific purpose of the Prowler to getting troops off, right? And that's landing with landing gear out, doors open, troops exiting, and those troops fighting from those wings for an extended period of time. I would argue no. Yeah, unless you're going right? to clean up some outlaws and they don't, they're just on like speeder bikes or something. So you got to corral the yeah, wagons. maybe NPCs, right? Because yeah, they're yeah. dumb and they don't have a lot of capability. But yeah, PvP, uh, you'd get demolished if you don't have air superiority. Then I wouldn't use a prowler. Yeah. Um, so what we're developing right now, though, is the Cutlass Black. A lot of people could argue too that it's weaker. And it is. It's weaker shields. It's weaker everything except maneuverability. And someone mm-hmm. goes, ah, what are you talking about? The cutlass sucks in Atmo. It does. It does. But if you stop using a cutlass like a traditional fly in and go low to the ground, drop troops, and then fly out, it's not a traditional dropship. In fact, the cutlass black, I would argue, is actually the truest to the word dropship because of this tactic. We've, we're developing a, a dive insertion. Picture Elon Musk's rocket coming back to Earth. It flips and burns vertical thrust upwards to slow its descent, right, as it falls, and then it lands upright. Same thing with the Cutlass Black VTOL. You go full tilt, burning, and I've, I've been maintaining speeds of about 400 meters a second down. As the atmosphere gets more dense, you start slowing, and right around like 280 meters a second is where it tops out when you're about you know, three or four clicks above the ground. And this is on Microtech. I've done it on Hurston as well. So those are the heaviest, densest atmospheres we have currently. And then Echo's seen me do this, and uh, we're developing it still. But you time it, and you have to know what the actual uh, altitude of the objective is. So it takes some reconnaissance, but very easy to find that out. And you just flip your nose up, flip into VTOL, and then burn right before you hit the ground, and you can come to a stop without even deploying your landing gear at about 10 to 20 meters off the deck, which is completely safe, right, from a ground point for you to jump out? Yeah, yes, currently. Mm -hmm. Sorry, my throat's bugging me today. So instead of flying through and making the Cutlass Black slow slow and and explode, and being trapped against the ground. So if an enemy fighter sees you, they can dive on you. It's the opposite way. I'm diving, hopefully, through friendly forces. If we have a friendly battle going up above the objective, I'm going to dive through that rat's nest. (laughs) Flip and burn, come to a stop. And then once troops are deployed, it's just full burn up, 14 Gs, fastest VTOLs in the game. And you can reach four or 5,000 kilometers no, four clicks. Yeah, four or 5,000 meters off the deck um, in like nine to 12 seconds, depending on, you know, if you if you adjust it or flew it differently, something like that. So, yeah. And I think the big <clears throat> final test for that, right, is is getting a, a good air core together and trying to defeat it. Exactly. And that's what we're hoping to do this week. And I got to put it on the calendar still. The Mighty yep. 8th volunteered to help us out. Um Cool. And yeah, it's just one more option in the tool belt. So rethink the Cutlass Black, and uh, we have no problem sharing our tactics here because if it if, if we share the tactic and you know what the tactic is and you can defeat it, then it's not a good tactic. That's my opinion. So if that's the case, if we share this out and then everybody starts doing it and everybody knows about it, then then we'll just hit the chalkboard again, the blackboard, and we'll yep. find something new. It's that, it's that Star Citizen backer masochist mentality that we have that we're just applying to all aspects of our game. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's what we've been developing with the Cutlass Black. It's been really fun. Um, Mal, how are we doing on time? Um, You're at about an hour. Okay. So I wanted to talk a little bit about flight paths. We already just kind of touched on it. Um, But the question, a dropship pilot. um, Let's see here. So the question a dropship pilot could ask, or the question you should ask, is how can a pilot transporting troops um, minimize their time spent 
over an objective um, and within an enemy's defenses, they're kind of one and the same, right? If, if they're defending an objective, they're probably going to have some air cover. They're probably going to have some uh, anti-air assets like a ballista on the ground and stuff. So uh, f- when it comes to flight paths, like let's jam on that. What, what do you think? What are some methods? Picture, take a Pisces. How can you minimize your time spent over an objective? Uh, speed violence of action, <clears throat> speed surprise violence of action. Right, it's like the like typical <clears throat> dumb. Gra- I listen. I, I I think there are merits to diving in, uh, way above and drawing right, like drawing attention mm-hmm. to to what you're doing, right, and that could potentially give you an upper hand. I also think there's merits to flying contour of the earth as well, right, and Agreed. using small mountains and hills to sort of cut um you know angles off from specific you know missiles and things like that i think a good combat pilot's gonna regardless i think a good combat combat pilot's gonna be able to identify what you're doing and and really do it so it just comes down to like support right um but Mm -hmm. yeah to, to minimize the danger i mean getting there and getting out quick right like is is that's speed really yeah is how you sort of get out of it or minimize or increase your survivability. Exactly. Speed is a, is a huge thing and maneuverability. So the Pisces, you don't have to like worry about shit like that. Cause the Pisces is going to reach its max speed in Atmo. It's super quick and it's really agile. So that pilot yeah. has to be very like G force conscious. Like, cause mm-hmm. you will knock people out. You're not, or you knock them down. If they sit in the seat, they'll black out and get the audio bugs. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's really important to know that. But like, if you're doing the low and slow approach, which is great. I mean, either way, you should probably have some air co- cover. <laughs> you shouldn't just fly a ship into 10 enemy ships. Then you, you'll die. Um, right. But yeah, the low and slow approach is good. So it's like, how can I maximize my flight time in there? And so another thing we've developed, um, still developing, is using the benefits of a, a Pisces, right? It's so fast. Mm-hmm. It's so quick. Um, it's so small, too. It's just hard to kill if it's moving um, unless right. you got a pilot right on its ass. So how can you get a Pisces through that fray of air combat quickly and down to the ground and make sure everybody's safe? is the question because we learned and we've learned multiple times that <laughs> Pisces won't last if you have to fly through that whole combat zone. So we came up it's, with the idea. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, it's just, uh, it's agility and speed are its sh- shields and armor. And yeah, if you're in a situation where you actually need shields and armor, the Pisces is not the ship you want to go with. Exactly. It's not, and um, it's really risky. So we've developed a system to deliver a Pisces into the battle space. They fit perfectly in the back of a C2 Hercules. The Hercules does a very high deployment of those. Like, they can adjust it. The pilot could come in over the target 10Ks. Five, three, yep. one, doesn't matter. Um, the point is, it's like a bombing run, but the Pisces are the payload. <laughs> So imagine yeah. now we're not going to go into detail on how you deploy a Pisces because we'll let you guys figure that out because um, it is hard, but it's replicatable, it's doable, and it, and like it's consistent. So we can do that and deliver in Atmo. Now we're above the objective with a lot of meat, a lot of shields, and then we shit those Pisces out and we maximize our efficiency inside that area with mm-hmm. a really, really quick drop ship and get troops on the ground that way. <clears throat> So those are some questions that I like to question myself and answer. Like, how can I, what's the best way for this ship? If I'm flying a Redeemer, if I'm flying a Retaliator, what are those ships' capabilities and how can it enable me to spend less time in enemy territory and less time yeah. over the target? How can I maximize my speed going to that thing? So, but anyway, I'm just running my mouth here about drop ships. Um, let's talk about from the ground perspective. Okay. Um Anything else? Like, what what's going through your head on uh, an insertion? 
Well, I, I can't think about things I, I don't have control over, right? Uh, I don't have control over the pilot, really, right? Like, in a sense of they have a better essay on what's going on because nine times out of ten I can't see outside the ship, so they have the best um, perspective for, you know, if, like again, if I choose an LZ, I don't like that one. I like this one. And it's not because of skill. It's because he's thinking about, you know, they're thinking about the pilot, the, the, the troops being dropped off in a covered and concealed area, right? Like dropping them off in an open field is great if you're not a skilled pilot, but dropping them off in a little bit tighter of an area so that they're, you know, have a train feature um, is better, you know? And so I, I guess what I'm thinking about is just my equipment. Am I ready to drop? Right. Depending on the type of drop, like, do I need to have a med pen out? Do I need to have my gun out? Um, you know, uh, what what exit hole I'm going to move through, um, you know, and, and ensuring that I'm ready for that, right? And that, again, that's based on the pilot. Like, hey, you know, that pilot's going to know best best side, rear, left or right to jump out of. And um, I, I'm worried about bracing and enabling the pilot to do is everything that they need to do to be able to get us there as efficiently and safely as possible so you know i'm always if i'm not doing anything i'm always braced in a ship like just yeah braced is either prone or sitting in a seat or you know using an emote or something to brace myself um to to give that pilot to enable that pilot as as much as as need be right mm -hmm. um but i mean beyond that i really there's nothing really else i can kind of control or, or be concerned about you know right yeah and that, that's so cru crucial is just being tight and controlling what you can control. Because um, mm -hmm. if you're not braced and you get tossed and you're laying on the ground when they call green light, you're going to get out of the ship late. The pilot might have adjusted oh. altitude. You're going to, it just a whole slew of problems can happen. So, yeah. Um, so from the ground perspective. Um, it, it One last thing, yeah. you know, it's, it, it, talking on the topic of survivability, like, that's a big deal uh, from the ground perspective to try and enable to give that pilot as little time on the ground as possible. Right. And so it requires me to be more efficient in the back, be as close to the edge as I mm. possibly can, you know, with the stuff going on with the ramps right now, you know, understanding like what is causing that and, and ensuring that I'm not blowing up the ship. Yeah. <laughs> uh, making sure that that pilot is not on that, objective longer than they need to be right and so and the way i can do that again enable that pilot and increase his their survivability is by getting off that ship as quickly as possible yeah and then in turn it increases your survivability because if you need to pick up later if your bird's dead then that sucks <laughs> yeah so yeah right? it, it just increases everyone's survivability that's that's super yeah. crucial so from you as a grant as a grunt in the back um like, what is it, like, how, how does a, how does it affect morale? Like, how does the pilot, right? Now, does, you, you could picture any, anybody in the pilot seat, good or bad. Like, how does that affect the morale of the troops in the, in the back? <laughs> as far as what? Like, you know. If, oh, who's if, piloting? If you have a good pilot or, or if you have a big, like, so positive. Yeah, I negative. mean, com confidence in your pilot is, is a must, right? Like. Yeah. It, uh, it's the difference between me piloting a ship and Chenkov piloting a ship, right? Like I would hope that if I'm piloting, people are a little uneasy about it. Uh, <laughs> and if Chenkov's piloting, they're like, okay, I don't, that's not like, I don't have to worry about that individual. Like I know he knows what he's doing. Mm. Um, and he's a capable person to, to hold that position, right? Like to hold that billet and, and, and do it right. And so again, we, I think at the beginning of this conversation, we had talked about like, Sure, anyone can learn to do this stuff, but like the time in which they're learning to do it shouldn't be the middle of an op, right? And knowing yeah. that Chenkov's flying over me should give more confidence to the troops in the back that they're going to get dropped off in the best possible spot, if not on the spot they pick, that the ship is not going to be dead, like explode to, in route to the drop off point, right? And there's a higher chance of that ship 
flying out of there and being safe and maybe going back to get repaired or, you know, getting out of that zone fast enough to be able to survive and pick us back up later if need be. Yeah. And that's to me, that's the end goal is dropping the troops off and surviving and then being in a holding pattern somewhere so you can quickly come back to us. Right. Exactly. Yep. It's uh it's crucial too. So the, the thing, the perspective of the ground team, it's like a very symbiotic relationship <clears throat> with their transport yeah. pilot. Um, Cause it enables or disables a lot of the capabilities. So it's such a, it's such a point or it, it's such a job that, so much friction is happening on that like you need to have some good pilots. If you're serious about getting to the ground and doing what you need to do. Um, yeah. Cause in, in real life, like we would just drop the grunts off, you know, 30 clicks away. You guys would hike in. That's the stealthiest way to get in. But if time, and that's why for us, you know, that, that, that position in an, in event, right. In an official event is kind of locked down. Uh, it's, Again, it's not to prohibit anybody. We we want people to be able to take those positions, but you have to understand everything that comes with that, all the responsibilities that come with that position. You can't just, well, I got two verbals. I'm, okay, the, I'm the pilot. Cool. It's kind of like, yeah, right? It's kind of like, well, I bought a $2,000 rifle. So you're the sniper. Cool. Yeah, do you know how to shoot it? Yeah. Right? Like having the tool and using the tool are two completely different things. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's very, very crucial for that to be enabled. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people don't get is sometimes it's just whimsically chosen. And, uh, you know, if you're having a frustrating play session in star citizen, you're like, wait, what happened here? Oh, it's, you know, this guy, this, well, this happened. And even if you have an experienced pilot, sometimes they make a mistake, you know, and, and it ends up costing everybody. Sometimes the game fights you too. I mean, I've been flying low and slow over Hurston. And, uh, you know, these big piles of trash will just automatically, like, appear in front of you. Or you'll hit invisible items. Um, or sometimes you just can't see shit. So if you yeah. want a good, like, proving ground for dropships, I would recommend going to Art Corp uh, on their rooftops to get pinpoint landing accuracy. Um, and pinpoint coming to stops and hovers to deploy troops. That's like our kind of our proving ground. We call it the gauntlet. But the, the real gauntlet, I think, is actually Hurston. It, you want to, like, the ultimate piloting test ever is, like, flying anything on Hurston. Whatever. If you're, if you're hauling cargo and you want to get better at, like, flying your ship, go to Hurston. If you want to do ace combat, you want to be a fighter pilot in Atmo, go to Hurston. If you want to practice getting to the ground without blowing up because you can't see shit, go to Hurston. Um, yeah, so that, those are all great things because you need ground troops to help get the drop guy, the dropship pilot reps. And then if in order for the yep. ground team to get reps, like they need a good dropship pilot. So it's like, it's, yeah. it's like peanut butter and jelly. But I think we beat that to death. There's a lot more in that document that will be coming out for the privateers. <clears throat> um, what else you got dropship wise? What else is important for a ground dudes to, to know about drop shipping or the pilot? Uh, yeah. I mean, just know the ship that you're on, right? Like mm -hmm. that's a huge one um know how the ship functions you know know who's touching the door button who's not that's a believe it or not a kind of a big thing um yeah. i think by habit just because a lot of us started playing this game by ourselves we just automatically want to open the door but you know building that habit or or building the muscle memory to to res like having the willpower not to touch the door if you're like at the mm. back of the stack is is a thing right and and it all needs to be coordinated because it's a it's a whole coordinated process right like if everyone's just willy-nilly trying to open the door you got four people like the door opens and closes and then it breaks because star citizen <laughs> so you know understanding the ship understanding you know the bugs with the ship yeah bugs with the ship right where to go how to step how what, maybe not, don't wear backpacks coming off ramps if you want to wear backpacks maybe use a ship with a side door because that doesn't seem to be an issue Hmm. um breaking and not uh, sprinting ship. down a ramp too not sprint yeah i mean there's there's so many bugs that yeah. will destroy your game time like literally understanding the 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 craft you're in and how to efficiently exit and enter that is you know huge it's huge for a ground guy um and then it's also huge for the pilot to remind people and enforce that that's where like mm -hmm. that decisiveness comes from 
having the ability to communicate. And like, no matter how many times I've heard it, I will never be offended if we have 12 guys boarding a ship and someone says, no sprinting, scroll wheels down, get on the ship so we can all like, yes, yes, thank you. It's a professional I, courtesy, like a is. professional reminder, you know? It is, because sometimes you forget. And then it, you well, know. I have the habit of hitting sh- uh, shift every time I run. Yeah. You know, or every time I move, because I can get places faster in a video game by hit holding shift. Oh, yeah. Saves but in time. certain situations, that's not a good thing to do. Right? It's not. Yeah, if you're if you're playing the game by yourself, you might not have been running into these bugs, or you did. Maybe it's now making sense. You're like, oh, that's why. Um, but so I find when I play by myself, it doesn't really work. But if you get for some reason when the game has you know four to six to eight to ten people in one area, especially one gravity grid like a ship, then it gets really confused. And so one guy. He sprints down the ramp, the the ramp, and he's wearing a backpack, and boom! Just the whole ship explodes for some reason, or for some reason, if you get out of the the cockpit of a Gladius with a backpack on, there's like a fifty percent chance it's just going to explode. I don't know if that's fixed fixed yet, but that's been the last two months, three months in Star yeah. Citizen. So yeah, that's super important, <clears throat> um, and also like understanding and having a process that you can break down. Not a verbal tradition that you pass down to people because that's going to be all over the place. But Echo is like really adamant about everything being written, right? It's one thing to teach it verbally. It's one thing to see it in a video. It's another thing to have a document that is gospel. It's the Ten Commandments. It's written on a stone tablet, essentially, in Echo's mind. But that process is so important. And he was helping me break it down when I was developing, we're still developing, that dive technique with the Cutlass Black um, I, mm-hmm. you know, he just offered to type it out as I was telling him what I'm doing. So I'm like, at this altitude, I'm, I'm hitting boost at this altitude. I'm pitching up at this. Then I'm flipping <laughs> V told like there's even just a normal drop. If you're coming in for a landing, there's like seven, 17 things you got to do, especially if you have joysticks, you're, <laughs> you're moving, uh, you're adjusting your speed, your altitude, you're, you're controlling the craft in a weather and then you gotta flip the doors open. You gotta flip VTOL, maybe. You gotta call green light. You gotta press a button to talk to them to tell them to jump out. Um, it gets really involved. So if you don't have a process, then the consistency will never, never beseech you. It will never be there. And I think you can have a process without writing it down <laughs> if you're the only one that's ever gonna do it. Right. Right. If you if you if your goal is to push a consistent thing to multiple people, especially new people that come in. Are you really going to remember everything all the time? Or can you just say, Hey, read, read this. And it'll tell you. And then if you have questions, you and I can get together in the server and we can talk about it. Right. Yeah. But at least it's a a basic fun foundation that new people and people that are skilled at it can start at and build up from. Right. Yep. Yeah. And it's also important too, to have, multiple players on the team that can do that. If you have one dropship pilot that just is knows everything and he's the best and he goes on vacation and everyone's like, who's going to fly? <laughs> you know, right. crap. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's good to have people that are well-rounded and that's why we're going to rotate. Um, we're going to select pilots and rotate and whoever's interested in that is going to get time on the stick and they're going to fill it in because it's not feasible to have <clears throat> one person do everything. So yeah, yep. it's, it's interesting, man. It's a fun topic to talk about. I think we're going to get some outside perspective on this too. We've been bumping into people, like the synchronicity of what's going on and what we're aligned with. Like people just fall into our lap. And they're like on the same page. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're excited. Um, anything else you got, Echo? Any saved rounds? No. Uh, yeah, if, I mean, if you guys want a different perspective on, you know, the whole drop ship uh and such we found i can't remember his name what's his what's his name calico cali joshua cali who joshua. i found on youtube um uh, yeah and we've been watching his drop ship um procedures videos mm. uh he has a playlist that he's got set up and actually he's got some like good mentality stuff and good mechanical stuff good game setting stuff that, that's in that um mm-hmm. it's a newer series uh, but definitely I watched them all like two or three times. I think he's got three or four videos right now. I've watched them two or three times and gone and adjusted my settings and 
um yeah. try to play with it as well so uh Ka- cali josh I'll, I'll link his stuff uh down down in the description so you can go check out that playlist if, if you're interested but yeah let's do it and we're gonna hit him up on twitter and see if he can at least he can yeah. come collaborate with our processes and build them out for help us build them yeah. um, or it's just give you a different perspective on it too right yeah. like and, and i think those perspectives are important to have and uh different differing opinions and um, you, the listener slash viewer, get to take what you need or want and apply it however you want to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but that's it for us. Uh, this has been another episode of Stuck in the Nail, the only podcast, I forgot to say this at the beginning, the only podcast on the internet talking about ground FPS and how to enable it further. That's why we talked about ships all day today, is how to enable yep. more ground combat. Troops on yep. the ground, kicking in airlock doors, Zinging, zanging, all that shit. So um, it's been bugs. fun. Avoid the bugs. Dude, that's like your number one enemy in Star Citizen. It's not PvE. It's not PvP. It's PvD, P- player versus developer. I say P- PvC, player versus Chris. Player versus Chris. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> PvCR. Yeah. Um, so that's it for us. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll yep. catch you guys next time. And we'll see you on the ground. See it on the ground. I'm not even waiting for you anymore. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> <laughs>